Okay, so in this video, we're gonna demonstrate guardrail version 1.2. And ultimately, we're going to create what we see here. We've got the point cloud, and we've got uh, most of the rail for the deck, and then some of the uh, first stair coming down here uh, done, and I'm gonna show you how to do this. Okay, so the first thing I did is I laid out all of my wood in here, um, and I created uh, different plan views and elevation views using the point cloud uh, to generate that. So I'm going to turn off the point cloud, and you can see that I've got uh, my deck wood, I've got um, basically the side stringers of the stair, and then I've uh, also just modeled in only the treads um, of the stair that I need in order to put in like the stub post support underneath the stair or to kind of see where a post might sit on a tread if that's applicable here. So uh, what I'm gonna do first is I'm actually gonna start with the stairs uh, because that's the most complicated and then other pieces are probably gonna attach to that. So what I'll do first is I'll go to my view menu and I've already generated these views for the stair inside uh, stringer and stair outside. Now I cut these uh, basically kind of looking from the outside in just so the slopes were all going the same direction. You may want to reverse that if you want to. Um, but when I cut the, uh, the views for the stair, um, I actually have the stringer lined up with the outside face of the deck here. And then um, here I have the offset so I could see where it was actually at relative to the point cloud. But when I cut my view, I actually cut it at that face there. So let me show you what I mean by that. If I go to new view uh, using two points, I basically cut my view here from the outside. You see how the left uh, to right, the arrows point inward. Uh, and if I go from right to left, the arrows point outward. Um, so if I'm doing the deck rail, then I'll probably actually kind of be like going from left to right and look from the inside of the, the deck towards the outside. But for the stair, just to keep things consistent, I did um, basically left to right here looking from the outside in. Now I've already created those views, so I'm just gonna open those up and let's start with the stair um, basically inside. So you'll see that if I double click on the background, the view depth is shrunk down here, so I'm only seeing the stringer um, relative to the inside of the stair and I'm not seeing the outside one. And that view depth allows me to control that basically at the kind of the face of the deck. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to applications components, we'll go underneath our edge rail and screen, and we'll double click on the guardrail component. Now you'll see here at the top that this is version 1.2 if it's installed correctly. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and start here uh, by just putting something in and then I'll change the uh, dimensions here that we see for instance on the stair rail tab. This actually gives us uh, unique controls over the first and the last post. So when I look at this here, the edge of the deck and kind of the start of the stair, the top of the nosing, um, as well as the top of the stringer is here. So I'll pick that as a start point. And then here, the bottom of the stringer and the end of the stair is there. Now, after I pick those two points, it's asking me to pick a post, but there's no post. It's gonna put two new posts in there. So I'm gonna middle mouse button, and then it will place in my rail. I'll right click and interrupt. And uh, first thing I can see is that, you know, I don't want the post coming outward like this. So I'll go to the parameters tab and instead of uh, plus four inches in there, I'll just say negative four and that'll pop the post outward away from that picked uh, point. Now down on the bottom, I want the same thing here. I'm gonna actually tell it to do a negative four inches. So I'll say negative four and then that'll push that outside of that nosing. Now I picked here at the nosing um, or the top of stringer, they just happen to be just about the same thing here on this particular stair. Um, but if you did have like kind of a drop to the nosing points from the top of stringer, you could pick the nosing and then you can adjust this dimension here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say two inches and it will be two inches in the diagonal from the picking points. Um, so if I just go to the edit tab and then I measure here from uh, the, uh, just right click and say maybe nearest, somewhere along the bottom of that and go perpendicular, then we can see that that's two inches. So that shows us that clearance that I want there. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna move this post from its current location down to where it's going to hit that wood deck for the stair landing. So I'll measure that here. I'll pick these two points and that's four and a quarter. So again, I did that here on the edit tab and then I went to the measure command pick two points, so my start point and end point, and that gives me that distance down. Then I'll go to the stair rail tab. So this was my second point picked, so I'll do four inch and one quarter, and I'll press modify. Now you'll see that the post actually drops down, but all of the nosing input information and everything stays where it was. Now at the top of the post, it looks like I need to bring that up a little bit. So maybe I'll just say two inches here, and then go up, and it looks like that needs to be a little bit more, so maybe we'll do three, modify, and this is actually based where the top of the rail hits the center of the post. So that's why I'm increasing that number a little bit bigger because all of the, the geometry of, this, of, the, of the rail is based on the center line of the post. 
uh, center line of pickets and then here we have like the top of the rail and then the bottom of the bottom rail is the control. Now you're going to see also that the uh, weep poles are now put in here, all the cuts for the pickets and the welds here. Um, so that way you can easily fit those without having to measure those. And uh, now we'll just go up to the top and we'll do the same thing here. We'll just measure this out and we'll adjust this as required. So I'll pick my two points. That looks like two and seven eighths on that one. And then um, here we can actually drop that down probably a little bit. So let's drop this to one inch and then we'll do two inch and seven eighths. And we'll just say modify. And then there you go, you see that that drops a little bit down so it's not quite as tall. That gets me the location for the bottom there. And uh, then I'll just go ahead and redraw and that shows that particular stair. Now, the one other thing here is that um, it looks like the weep holes are, uh, see, how, how are they looking on this side? A little bit close to that first picket because of the diagonal cut there. So if I wanted to, I can come in here, if I wanna force that out a little bit, I can say instead of the minimum gap of three, I can just go ahead and say modify and uh, or instead of one inch that I had there, I can say three, and then that will actually still hold the four inch on center and the three and a half uh, gap here, but it'll just increase that first and that last um, gap, and it'll just decrease the number of pickets and stuff that's involved there or that's required. Now, the next thing is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, look in my 3D view, so I'll tile vertically here, and uh, let's just see where we've got this placed. So if I, if I look at it, you know, this is placed right on the face of where I cut that uh, view at, which was at that slab. And so the offset here at the lower right, this is uh, incorrect, it's going the wrong way. So I'm gonna do like negative seven here just to see if that'll get me inside of the stringer. And uh, so it's getting me close. And this actually might work if I don't mind actually going above the stringer, if that's not a problem, and then that's getting on some pretty stable wood there on the deck, then uh, that might actually be the best thing to do versus pulling it all the way in unless that stringer is actually going over there and I don't really want to go over that uneven surface. Um, but I might actually uh, go ahead and do that for now. Now, let's uh, show you how we can go on the inside here. And then we'll go back to our guardrail components. And I've got some safe settings here, for instance, for uh, vertical rail. So I'll load that up. And it's going to try to shop attach uh, the first post and the uh, the right hand side of the of the intermediate frames. Um, so you'll see that in a second. And then I'm also going to actually probably switch this to field uh, for the miter condition. So I'll apply. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this location. I'll pick this location, and then I'll pick this last post. And then I'll middle mouse button here. Now when I do that, we've got to adjust some of the dimensions. You can see that it's actually you know going off of the the edge of the rail. And we don't want that. So we'll say negative four, so it comes in to the inside of the deck wood. And let me just redraw that. And I want this uh, post to be lined up so that way the miter can kick in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and switch this uh, up here to negative four, so it extends out. So we'll say modify. And then now you'll see that the miter kicks in there, right? So it's shop attached or field attaches it um, because that's got that miter condition there. Now, and in this version, I don't really quite have the uh, pickets going along there, but you can easily uh, copy these from you know this uh, post here uh, or these pickets from this top and bottom rail. You can copy or you can just put those in and uh, the next version will actually have that where that's automatically coming in. Um, but you at least have that connection there so you can see where that geometry needs to go and how it's gonna attach. And then from there, you could just continue to fill out the rest of this. So I'm seeing that this is shop attached um, on there. So I'm probably going to field attach going this way. So let me see. Let's just pick uh, this way to this corner. And then I'll middle mouse button. And let's just see what I've got going on here. So first of all, I need to set this again to where that's going on the inside. So I'll just say four inches. And now it makes up. Now, one thing here, if this ever happens, this happened because I didn't pick that post that was there, right? So I put the, picked the two points, but I didn't pick the uh, actual post location. So I'm gonna delete that, and then I'll just go back into here. I'll pick my two points, and so this is just a good reminder that if you want to connect the next rail to this post that's already existing, you gotta pick it, and then middle mouse button, and then there we go. Now it shows it as attached, and it's not doubling those up. Now here I've got shop and shop, and I don't really necessarily want that. So on my first point picked, I'll switch this to field and I'll modify and so then it makes that field attached. And then I just go to the other end here and then we can see that that's uh, gonna be shop attached there. And we can just redraw the window to get rid of those. And then this is field attached and then this is uh, shop attached here but the post is inside of the wall. So that's just simply coming up here and changing this to negative or sorry, that one was at four 
and then we'll change this one to four so that way it comes inward and there we go we've got everything all set redraw and then basically you just continue this same process here for the outside stringer so i would just open up the different view so I'll go to view view list and i would open up my outside stringer and you'll see that the view depth is controlled to where i'm not seeing the inside stringer i would lay in my stair rail and then i would do my horizontal rails or whatever however i wanted to field splice or attach those to that stair rail and uh, then just repeat that same process and finish off the rail around the rest of the edge of the deck now let's say that the center to center distance on this uh, stair post to post was greater than eight foot and rather than you guys putting in another post and trying to field coordinate where that's going to land uh, you guys end up putting in at the stub posts so i just made a stub support uh, out of two by two with a smaller base plate here and this is a custom part so you basically just uh, pick like one point and then it puts that in there and again they can kind of maneuver this wherever it needs to be but this is basically the tread of the stair that that needs to be on about uh, at the midpoint there of the stair now if i go back into 3d so we'll just tile our views vertically here and if i look in 3d we'll see that that's over at the face where i cut that view at the edge of the deck so just like here in the stair component i have this negative seven I can actually double click on this component and I can change the on plane offset here. So let's just say negative seven and let's see if that gets us where we want it. We'll just say modify. Okay, so that moved it in the X direction. So we don't want that. So we'll say negative seven. Let's see if it moves it out to where we want it. There we go. Now it is placed correctly here underneath the posts. And again, they're going to field trim that to fit underneath there as required. But there you go. Okay, so we also have the start of the horizontal rail option. So let's just go to the save settings here of horizontal rail. We'll press load and it'll load those up. It switches this to horizontal for the rail type. And then uh, it does tweak uh, basically this minimum gap here to uh, work with your standard three foot tall uh, kind of spacing for the horizontal pieces. And then um, also you can adjust the shop attachments here. Uh, to the posts but then also one other thing that's changed is basically we have this half inch diameter by eighth inch thick uh, uh, pipe for the horizontal balusters and then uh, we've got that material grade and so now i'm just going to apply these settings here and uh, let's just pick from the inside so we're going left to right here pick the two points and middle mouse button and then there we go we'll just go ahead and redraw here and we can see that the first uh, rail assembly so if i switch my selection down here to select assemblies we can see that that's both shop attached and then this is the next uh, run that is basically field attached on one side and uh, if i go back to select components then i can double click and open up the component dialog box and modify any of the properties but you'll see here that the uh, there are the cuts for basically uh, to allow it to be easier for the shop to basically fit those in there without having to measure them and then uh, we've got the shop attachments for the top and the bottom and then there is the field attachment here so let's just go ahead and double check that there we go so there's that continuous bar and then we have the screws that are inside uh, for that end plate and then there are the horizontal balusters are actually going inside of that end plate so there are uh, cuts inside of there so that way those can be fit quickly in there as well and uh, there you go that shows you the horizontal rail option